This is the B-21 Raider, America's next long-range, low-observable bomber. It is designed to reset America's strategic strike, absolute stealth, survivable airframes built in greater numbers and global reach into the hardest airspace on Earth, including strategic missions against peer adversaries in China and Russia. At its core, the design is about adaptability. The B-21 uses an open systems architecture so sensors, mission systems, and software can be upgraded at speed. A digital backbone links the jet into a larger long-range strike family, collecting, sharing, and shaping information to open corridors for the weapon it carries. From the outset, the program emphasized reliability and turnaround. Low observable materials and access points are engineered to cut maintenance hours and raise sortie rates, directly addressing the heavy upkeep and costs that shadowed the B-2. The goal is a bomber that spends more time airborne than in the hangar. Official numbers remain scarce by design, but public imagery and credible analysis point to a smaller, tighter airframe, appearing roughly half the B-2's size and expected payload class. What it gives up in sheer carriage, it aims to win back with deeper survivability, simpler upkeep, and, critically, volume. Program timeline, public rollout on December 2nd, 2022, first flight on November 10th, 2023 to Edwards for test. Early production began in 2024, with at least three aircraft now believed to be in the test program. Procurement is sized for scale, a minimum of 100 aircraft planned, with an average unit procurement cost target of $692 million, a fraction of what the B-2 cost. What matters in a bomber is what it can deliver, how it delivers it, and whether it survives to do it again. The B-21 is built to carry a mix of nuclear and conventional weapons entirely inside the airframe, preserving stealth from taxi to egress. The GBU-57, better known as the Bunker Buster, is the benchmark. 30,000 pounds of hardened steel and high explosive designed to punch through reinforced concrete and buried bunkers. It's already operational on the B-2 and the B-21 is expected to carry a similar class of deep penetration weapons, conventional or nuclear, without compromising its low observable profile. Beyond that, the conventional loadout is modular. GPS-guided JDAMs cover the basics, 500 to 2,000 pound bombs, plus BLU series penetrators for hardened targets. These are coordinate weapons designed to hit a grid square not a general area. Next come the glide and standoff options. The GBU-39 and GBU-53 small diameter bombs allow for multiple precise strikes with minimal collateral. The AGM-158 JASM and its extended range variant push reach even further. Stealthy cruise missiles built to hit high value targets from outside the threat ring. The B-21 is expected to integrate these as testing matures. On the nuclear side, the B-61 gravity bomb remains the flexible option, with variable yields and updated guidance. The legacy B-83 is being retired. The next step is the long-range standoff missile, a stealth cruise missile carried internally, designed to penetrate modern air defenses and preserve strategic credibility. The architecture is the point. Internal carriage keeps the radar signature low and the options open. Payloads can be swapped, upgraded or reconfigured without redesigning the platform. The exact combinations aren't public and won't be, but the mission is clear. Deliver the right weapon at the right time and stay survivable enough to do it again. The B-21 isn't just a new bomber, it's the pivot point for the entire strategic fleet. The Air Force plans to retire the B-1 and B-2, consolidating long-range strike into a two-platform backbone, the B-21 Raider and the modernized B-52. One is stealth first, built for deep penetration. The other is payload heavy, re-engined and upgraded for standoff. Together, they form a resilient mix, survivable, scalable, and sustainable. What makes the B-21 different isn't just shape or signature, it's how it's built. 
The program leaned hard into digital engineering from day one. Every component, system, and interface is modeled and tested virtually before it ever hits the factory floor. That digital thread links design, production, and sustainment, allowing faster upgrades, cleaner integration, and fewer surprises in the field. Stealth is no longer a fragile asset. The B-21's low observable coatings and access points are designed for maintainability. Less time in the hangar, more time on the line. That shift matters. It means more jets available, higher sortie rates, and a bomber force that can surge when needed without waiting on depot-level repairs. For nuclear options, the B-21 is built to carry the long-range standoff missile, a stealthy, internally housed cruise missile designed to keep the deterrent viable against modern air defenses. It's part of the broader modernization effort, ensuring that strategic reach remains credible, flexible, and survivable. This is the shift, not just a new jet, but a new way to build, operate, and sustain a bomber force. The B-21 isn't a replacement. It's a complete reset. The B-2 took decades to field just 21 jets. The B-21 flips that script, modular by design, lower per unit cost, and built for a fleet of over 100. Scale isn't a side effect. It's part of the strategic plan. The B-2 Spirit is still flying, but not for long. With just 20 aircraft in service, the Air Force plans to retire the fleet as the B-21 scales up. It's a deliberate handoff, fewer jets with high maintenance demands, replaced by a platform built for volume and uptime. Next in line is the B-1B Lancer. Originally fielded in the 1980s, the B-1 was designed for high-speed, low-altitude penetration before shifting to conventional strike. Today, 45 remain in the active inventory. It's a powerful platform, but it's aging fast. Heavy maintenance, limited stealth, and treaty restrictions on nuclear carriage have narrowed its role. Retirement is already underway. 17 airframes were divested in 2021, and the rest are expected to phase out as the B-21 expands. The logic is clear. Fewer legacy platforms, more survivable jets, and a bomber force that's built to operate, not just exist. The U.S. strategic bomber fleet is entering its next phase. The B-52 Stratofortress, first flown in 1952, remains in service, re-engined and modernized to carry standoff weapons deep into the 21st century. It's not a relic, it's a workhorse, built for endurance and payload. This shift isn't just about platforms, it's about posture. Strategic positioning demands flexibility, sustained reliability, and force projection across vast distances. The Pacific Theater isn't a hypothetical, it's a planning priority, and scale matters. With over 100 B-21s planned, the US is investing in volume, survivability, and reach. The bomber force is being reshaped, not to match the past, but to meet what's coming. Survivable strike, global access, and a fleet that's ready to move when the order comes.